Hello, hi there. I'm Jason Chancoco. I am a writer and I am also into blades. I am also into hiking. I am also into uh, martial arts. I am also into prepping and also bushcraft. Also bushcraft. And somewhat, I am also into what they call a uh, survivalism as a philosophy although survivalism requires training no a lifelong training now first um where am i where am i i seem to be in the middle of nowhere no in the middle of nowhere but you know what i am really not because the forest is actually also our home no the forest is actually also our home. Just think about the oxygen that it produces. Just think about the carbon dioxide that we as humans also produce. No? It's a symbiotic relationship. Actually, the forest is part of our limbic system, part of our anatomy, if I will say. And here, Okay, in view of the current problem that we are having on, on our health, the COVID-19 problem. Here, you really don't need a face mask. So let me remove my face mask. Okay, I'm somewhere in Mount Isarog. If you are uh, an Agenio or if you are from Kamsu, you know that Mount Isarog is uh, one of the major mountains. Okay, mountains in, in Kamsur, and it's actually a, a natural park, a really uh, beautiful uh, mountain and forest, okay, uh, with much biodiversity. Um, well, as per, as per prepper's dictum, or as per the off the grid philosophy i am not supposed to what to reveal my exact location that's actually the the idea the main idea of being off the grid okay being somewhat unreachable unreachable but you know it's it's actually practically impossible to be unreach, unreachable right now unless you really want to be you know to, to to go full you know full off the grid that's when you actually disappear you know <laughs> disappear without a trace you leave your what you leave your former persona and go to the to the forest or somewhere and then disappear there and uh, for many of us that's not really our intention we just want to find out what are our options in in the current uh, problem that we have on covid-19 and uh, another question is why am i here why why am i here well, you know very well that uh, uh, the COVID-19, for instance, uh, uh, is a problem of, of the metropolis. It's a problem of the cities because, you know very well, the transmission, okay, it's human to human and uh, the virus is really very contagious. The more people around you, the more chances, okay, the more chances of you uh, getting uh, infected so what better place to go than a rural area you know a farm a forest or say a place near uh, near the forest or near uh, a rural area for example so that's why i'm here that's why i'm here you see, in, in, a, in a place like this, okay, where farming villages are present, you can grow your own food, okay? You know very well that uh, with the current problem, okay, there is a scarcity, no? scarcity of, of food and resources. Some people cannot work. Some people 
cannot be paid, okay, or won't be paid without work. So it's really a way of going back to, to of course, it's a cliche, to basics, going back to, to basics. That's why I am here in a place like this where you can actually practice social distancing easily. You know, I just have to be with your family and then, you know, you can hike, you can hike and then you can get your sunlight, you can get your exercise and still be far away from other people as possible. Okay, when did this philosophy actually start? Well, if you think about it, the Bicol word kadlagan, okay, the Bicol word kadlagan could very well be kadulagan or dulagan. So, it is uh, quite safe to say that uh, the philosophy is actually inherent, okay, inherent to us Bicolanos, okay. Even pre-Hispanic Bicolanos must have had this philosophy long time ago, okay. Um, they used to subsist, okay. They used to live off the land, okay. They used to practice barter. You, they used to practice um, trading and uh, forest provided for them. The forest was their comfort zone, was their home, and also their place of refuge whenever they had problems or whenever they were under attack from other group, groups of people or other tribes. The forest was their kadulagan or their uh, means of escape. Um, however, recently, recently, um, some people, okay, started to develop uh, this kind of philosophy, you know, of being what, of being off the grid, of being uh, one with nature, of developing your spirituality while you're with nature, you're with the forest. Or uh, by uh, being preppers or being prepared and uh, making the forest uh, or the rural areas part of their uh, what of their preparation of their preparation. Um, for instance, the, the Americans, the Americans, they were the ones who actually coined the term prepper or or, or, or you know people who are actually prepared. It's as, it's as simple as that. People who are always prepared for any eventuality. You may say they are paranoid, but if you think about it, okay, there are extreme preppers. There are preppers who are really, you know, doing really weird stuff. It's I admit that. But there are also people who are what we call everyday preppers. They are practical. They are prepared. For, for their everyday, for any eventuality in their everyday lives. And uh, in fact, they have what we call as EDC or everyday carry. They carry tools, you know. They carry tools that would uh, help them with their everyday lives and then uh, would help them in case there are emergencies. And in case there are what? Emergencies. However, uh, these tools. These so-called EDC tools by the preppers are also what I call as life, life tools, life tools, and uh, they need not be um, an object or or a tool per se. They could be a mindset, a philosophy, or a mindset, or a state of mind, or a mental what? A mental thing. A mental training. You know, uh, preparedness, right? Uh, being mentally what? Being mentally prepared. It's also an everyday carry. You carry your brain. You carry your mind. You carry your thoughts. You carry your philosophy. You carry preparedness every step of the way, right? That's how it is. Um, now. 
there's no need to justify. You know, there's no need to justify why we need to be prepared or we need to be, you know, they call preppers because uh, we already know that things can go out of hand. Okay, things that are difficult to control, something like COVID-19. You know, every country, almost every country, is afflicted. The U.S., you know, first world countries. And uh, going back to the philosophy of the Kadlagan or the philosophy of the of the greed, um, we are also going to consider what something we call as individual or something we call as independence. It's not really anarchism or something like that. It's independence, no? Being self-sustaining. Okay, in case things go wrong, in case, uh, for example, the government or the laws, you know, fail to function, or they, they fail to be to be effective. For example, if if the government or the state, okay, after receiving much of our taxes, no, fail to to do its job, no, to do its job, then what do you do? Do you rely on the government? Of course, we have to give the government some form of allegiance, but you cannot give it 100% what? Reliance. Okay? Reliance. We have to be independent as well. And the reason for that? No need to go further. COVID-19. COVID-19. So that's where the philosophy actually started. Um, from from our roots, from our native roots. And the idea of prepping, the idea of being off the grid, etc., the idea of bushcraft, it's already being done by our uh, by our farmers in the rural areas. It's already be, being done by them. Only that maybe they don't have the the consciousness yet, you know. Maybe they, they, they actually do the same as a matter of necessity. Not as a matter of choice. Maybe they, they actually wanted to go more to the city, but they have no choice. But for us, who are city dwellers, you know, we need to what? We need to balance. You know, we need to balance our world. Okay. The trick is actually to be familiar with the geometry of the city, but also be also privy to the rules of the jungle, you know, the, the rules of the forest. Be physically prepared for it. Be mentally prepared for it, and uh, have the tools and and then have the you know stamina for it. Have the stamina for it. And now, now, do you really have to forsake the city? Do we, do you really have to what to leave the city? You know, forsake it, then never come back or disappear without a trace. You know, um, actually no, no. As I said. We need to be still uh, be connected with the city. However, we must not what solely rely on urbanism. And I don't think to explain anymore why. You know very well, very well what's happening, and you know that people in Manila are you know, having a hard time right now. They are stuck in one place and they cannot move, and then um, uh, the rules are so strict. You violate the quarantine. You do. You, you risk. You risk getting shot. Um, things like that. Um, people are cramped together in in just one place. Do, that sort of thing. Um, however, you, we need to still be able to capitalize on what the city can provide, and yet be able to what to to. To prepare ourselves when to what? When to bug out. No? When to leave, when to bug out. We can always go back to the city, but we have to know when to to what? To leave it, to bug out. And what is bugging out? It is going out of the city. I mean going out of the city while still being prepared. I mean it's not leaving the city and you do it haphazardly, no, no. You bug out by having a some sort of a preparation, 
you have a bug out bag we call it bob bug out bag where your essentials are 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 placed and you need not what you need not prepare anymore when when the problem arises you just have to pick up that bag and then and then actually leave and go you go to your secret bug out place where where actually you can hide or nobody actually knows about okay and then when you are ready to go to the city you can go to the city if you like you can go to the city you can uh, buy supplies as in the so-called zombie apocalypse you know you can do your uh, what we call as uh, the grocery runs we do that here also we do that here also once a week i think we go we do a grocery run we go to the city and we buy what we need but uh, most of the things that we need we grow you know we uh, my, my family actually uh, maintains a uh, uh, a what a uh, a farm, a garden, a vegetable garden, and so uh, we save up. No, we save up on the grocery runs. We don't have to do it more often because we have food, food that we grow, food that is actually safe because we we know we know how 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 we prepare the food, uh, no infections, you know, clean food, clean good nourish nourishing cuisine you know barrio cuisine okay another thing is do you have to forsake other cultural or political establishments the idea of what the idea of the academe the idea of the government and the laws the idea of society etc you see, the COVID-19 actually uh, is trying to negate everything that we we ever built, everything that we ever hold dear. For instance, um, our faith in the government, for instance. COVID-19 uh, crisis has shown us that sometimes, you know, sometimes the government with all its political considerations Okay, is actually the one causing the problems. You know, it's actually the one who opened the floodgates for the for the virus to actually what to actually enter the bloodstream of our the bloodstream of our of our society. You know, of course we have our faith to to medical science. You know, of course we love our frontliners, etc. But you know very well that what happened to the doctors. You know, with all their training, they were victimized. You know? they were, many of them died. Because of the COVID-19, because of the COVID-19, think about that. These are doctors, experts, but somewhat the, the, the virus was, was able to defeat them. It was able to uh, kill them. You know, what more for what? For ordinary people. But of course, we need, we need not what? We need not be afraid and we need not panic. You know, we just have to know. Uh, what to do we, we just have to remember that uh, for example doctors are also humans and uh, they can also be a little bit uh, careless another thing is uh, you know how society looks up to people who are you know who are rich and famous who have achieved so much but you know what right now achievement etc if this goes on you know if this virus uh, goes on, those things will be what? Those things will be irrelevant. What would matter is whether you are infected or you're not infected. Okay? No one will care if you are what? If you are uh, a multi-awarded what? A writer, for example. I'm a writer. No one will care about that. No? What's important is you're not infected. What's important is you are clean. Otherwise, no. You got you can't touch. You can't touch me, for example. I don't care about, about your achievements. You can't you can't touch me. Another thing is um what else? Money, no? We love money so much, but right now we know very well that the that money is is what? It's a carrier of the virus. It's a carrier of the virus. Money uh, is also 
one way to what? To the use of money, the currency system, the legal tender. It's also what? One way to to spread the virus. No, to spread the virus. That's why, as we said earlier, it's really beneficial to be what? To be off the grid sometimes, to be independent sometimes, to produce your own food, to provide for yourself, and not rely on the legal tender. No? Not rely on the legal tender and what? Go out of your way, join join mainstream society, and then be infected by a virus that is apparently infecting mainstream society. That's thing. That's one more. That's one thing. So those are the things. But uh, do you really need to actually? Divorce yourself from uh, societal and uh, political establishments like that. Well, maybe, maybe for some, maybe for some bushcrafters, for some uh, preppers, especially the anarchists. Maybe that's the that's the way to go. That's a, that's the way to go. But if you are not into that, if you're not into that kind of thinking or philosophy, uh, you need not. You know, detach yourself. You need not disattach from societal and political, any political establishment. Okay? You can be what? You can be prepared. You can be a prepper. You can you, you can be a bushcrafter. You know, you're able to survive off the land. You, you can be a, 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 a off-the-grid guy. You know? While still, what? While still a, a believer in democracy oh, while still a believer in 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 science or uh, while still a believer in in some religions no as a matter of fact you you can you can what you can be more spiritual no? in a place like this imagine this imagine you can meditate here no you can meditate you can read poetry huh? right you can play music acoustic guitar Wow, that would be great, and then have some, have some, something to eat like pili nut or something like that, instead of peanuts. By the way, uh, on my way here, I, I I was able to pick up some pili nuts, okay, and actually enjoyed them along the way. Now, what do you have to do? What do you have to do? What do you have to do? Well, well, well. Um, the first thing you you have to do is to, to have an open mind and to, to accept to accept that things have changed well for some I know for some people for some uh, people who call themselves preppers uh, they already accepted you know this situation they already uh, you know imagine they already uh, uh, meditated on this they already visualized this. Okay, sometimes even reenacted or sometimes they had dramatized or they they had simulations of this but for for many of us maybe that's not the case we need we need to what we need to open our minds we need to um, have a change of mindset have a change of mindset and um, we need to of course, we need to pray. We need to be spiritual about it also. Um, we need to know that we are what? Stewards of the earth, as the Jesuits would say. Uh, you know. Then uh, we make our faith part of our, you know, of our change, of our uh, change of mindset, of our change of philosophy, uh, at least on that particular aspect of our lives. And um, another thing is, of course, we need to, to, to study, we need to, to, to read about, about this particular culture, subculture, if you want to call it. Okay? You see, some people, uh, some people look at uh, uh, bushcrafters as a group of people with a, a very weird idea of a holiday. You know, they go to the forest and then they subsist there. You just bring a few, a few pieces of clothes and then they, they bring a knife, something like that, and then they... 
they subsist. You know, they are able to survive, you know, stay in the forest. So you need to study that. You need to learn from people. So shout out to, to my good friend, uh, Jojo Villarreal, <laughs> who, is, uh, who is into bushcraft. You know, uh, I actually consider myself a student of, of Jojo Villarreal when it comes to bushcraft. And uh, to my friends, uh, to my to my blade brothers, shout out to shout out to uh, sino ba to? <laughs> no, no. to my blade brothers alang. Shout out to those who are practicing what to are practicing uh, bushcraft every now and then. And uh, then shout out to them. And what are the other things you need to do? You need to aside from equip your mind, change your Change your mindset. Have an open mind. Uh, learn, you know. Learn what are the tools that you need. And the, number one, the number one tool is your brain, actually. Your brain. You don't have your. You don't have to have um, state of the art or, or very expensive tools. For example, uh, really very expensive uh, knives or, or multi tools. Uh, or, or, or backpack or EDC pouch things like that you, you don't need that as a matter of fact uh, when you are into prepping in bushcraft you're supposed to find a balance between the two you are not supposed to be overly dependent on tools no overly dependent on tools no that's a no no you have to as per the of the greed of bushcraft philosophy, you you have to subsist of of the land, right? So you must be able to 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 you to subsist without having sophisticated tools, simple tools lang uh, that you can you can build that can be learned. I myself, I'm still learning a lot. You know? I'm still learning a lot from. Uh, rural people from farmers actually my my so-called bushcraft teachers are are farmers simple uh, farm folks and uh, they 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 show me how and then i i join them i walk with them i hike with them i try to learn what they what they what they actually what they do i try to imitate i try to yeah, i try to learn from them that's what you can do um Change your mind, uh, change, have a change of mindset, have an open mind, know the tools, and know that your mind is your most important tool. That's it. Uh, on being a prepper, you, you, you can what? You can, right now, it's it's a little bit what difficult to do because of the lockdown, but you can, st it's never too late. It's never too late to start, you know, it's never too late to, to start. Um, being a prepper means being aware of the things that could go wrong within your vicinity. Within your vicinity. You have to be conscious of what could go wrong okay, near you in the very near, in a very near future. So that's what you should uh, first think of. Prefa prepare for something that could really happen. That could really happen right now there is covid it's already it already happened so we are all preppers right now technically we are we are all what we are all preppers we are all um conscious you know we are all conscious about about uh the virus we don't want to get infected we don't want our loved ones to be infected actually we have the prepper mindset already right now so this is the best time to actually start this is the best time to start and to gather our wits about and then and, and, slowly uh, slowly gather materials or tools materials or tools that's as for what as for prepping as for bush um the very first thing you should do is be uh, what? familiar with nature with the forest uh, hike hike if you can uh, you should uh, you should uh, be able to do uh, long distance hiking in places like this um, for one it's a good way to avoid the COVID-19 right it's a good way to avoid it you know being being in a place like this um, solo hikes like what I'm doing right now 
you just have to know your limits okay know your limits know your uh, know where you are okay and um, make sure you are familiar with the place that's why you need to immerse yourself with nature first just go to the forest for example or go to a nearby stream or natural park and then stay there just sit there and don't, don't get lost you know? have some uh, bring a guide with you bring a guide with you when you're already very familiar with the trail then that's when you that's when you uh, that's when you uh, do do it solo you can also bring your friends bring your friends have a hiking group you must uh, you must uh, connect also with with like-minded people no with people who are open-minded just like you yourself and um, you don't have to have a property no a property outside of the city you don't have to just have to know how to get to a rural area like this or, or a, a timber land like this just have to know where you just have to choose where and then um, if you can camp better if, you should practice you should practice you should do it often you should schedule it especially after the lockdown for example and then of course uh, buy a tent you know? buy a tent but for people who are more more uh, experienced man, these, these people they can just build their shelter you know they can build shelters they can uh, look for a nice place you know? habitable place in the forest and actually stay there okay you don't have to have a property as i said you don't have to have a, a, a real property out of the city but if you do have a real property a land out of the city you can you can what you can turn it into a farmland you can plant you can you can make a garden and you can do this while you're still in the city actually you can you can start gardening while you're in the city gardening or, or uh, growing your food while you are, you are in the city just find a spot in your house where you can do that that's it um right now i i'm hiking so i have uh, best thing to do is to show you what i have um, um i have my hiking stick I, I actually lost my other hiking stick while i was really counting the other day so i will come back for it and uh, my uh, bolo very simple uh, bolo which is uh, very important when you are in a place like this um, a longer blade is is more effective when you are in a forest like this um, i also have my my edc my my what my flashlight my multi tool and i also have my uh, my what my pocket knife pocket knife something you can use that for cooking okay well uh, for martial arts and for self defense uh, um, that's another uh, topic actually which is very much related to to prepping and to bushcraft and to to off the grid uh, living you know if you're you're if you're out there out here you, you must be able to defend yourself right so, or your family or your your kids so you have to know that some people they are highly trained in in hand to hand combat okay some people they actually trained uh, okay under uh, masters of kali grand masters maguro sakali okay shout out to kuya sam aral kali okay my kali teacher after this kuya sam i hope you can have a session okay and some people uh, actually what actually have Ltap, <laughs> okay, Ltap for their for their firearms, but it's not actually uh, required. You know? Some people they have the means to to actually have uh, a firearm 
um, you know very well that that, that the Philippine laws or, or the Philippines as a country is anti-gun, anti-gun. So guns here are very expensive. That's one way to what uh, to to discourage people from buying it. And then actually, it's it's quite difficult to obtain an ELTA. It's quite difficult. But for some for some people, they think it's easy, but. Mm, for me, it's it's quite difficult because one thing you need to have uh, financial what financial capability. They will look at your bank account. They, they will look at your what? They will look at your income. No, you can just you can just what you can just uh, be given a license. No, to own a firearm. You know? And. Uh, how about air guns? <laughs> air guns. I'm an envi I am an, an, an environmentalist, so I don't shoot birds. I shoot I shoot uh, f fishes, you know. Uh, freshwater what fish? The, the other day, I uh, was able to to hunt for hito. But most of the time, I just use my bolo when I hunt for hito. Um, air guns, you have to register them. Um, I'm not sure if so for some people are saying that uh, air gun re registration is no longer required, but and that the, the the PNP has lost jurisdiction over the registration requirement. But it's uh, I think it's still a debate, and uh, it, it's safer to to what to to register it, I guess, uh, and then. Uh, just have it for home defense. Some things are better than nothing, as, as my prepper friend, uh, Jason Antique, my tokayo. Shout out to Mr. Jason Antique of Texas, uh, the ultimate prepper, the ultimate Pinoy prepper. Okay, you can actually watch his videos on YouTube. Um, PNY Prepper and Jose Rizal too. To know more about prepping, he's actually an expert on prepping. There, um, air guns not recommended for hunting. I mean, I mean, for some people, if it's a life or death situation, you can use your air guns for air guns for hunting. Okay, you can just have, a, especially if it's a, it's a, it's a pump air gun. Tong di bomba, tong di bomba. It's self-sustaining. You can just build your, own. you can, you can make your own bullets. You can make your own bullets. Magtunaw ka lang ng tinga. You can, you can make your own bullets. Um, however, uh, some people use CO2 air guns. I do have uh, a CO2 air pistol. Just, just keep it. Just keep it. You know. And uh, when you have something like that, make sure that you don't use it you know, in violation of any of our laws our penal laws okay unless unless it's already a, a situation wherein the law doesn't uh, function anymore the law doesn't matter anymore because it's it's chaotic you know it's 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 what they call as uh, apocalyptic scenario already <laughs> that's it okay um thanks for watching um i hope i was able to share uh, a few things about this kind of philosophy um remember that uh, you, you you need not what divorce yourself from the city you still must be able to utilize or capitalize in what the city can provide but you are not supposed to be overly dependent on the city have some independence you know to survive have some independence to survive for example, in the city, you need you need to buy some medicines, okay? You need to buy some medicines, then go on, go go buy your medicines. But uh, you must also be uh, familiar with herbal medicines. And the forest, what a forest like this can provide you know? remedies for so many maladies, okay? So thank you, and uh, thanks for watching.